be the change, the empowerment message that we as a greater community should be working toward? If you had to tick off, like, hey, these are the two top things that we need, be to, we need to be focused on in terms of empowerment or in terms of making change, what are they? Oh my gosh, where's your list, ladies? Jeez. <laughs> Cue crickets noise. <laughs> When you say making change for girls? Yeah, I think in general. I mean, I know, for example, if you're talking about minority women, I would guess economic empowerment um, because, clear, first of all, this is your area, so doctor, jump on in whenever you want. <laughs> uh, but but I, I think that for a lot of minority women who want to start businesses, there's no funding, right? So right. there's got to be some, you can't have economic empowerment if you don't have all the policies supporting those things that could actually help women of color in their communities. So look, I'm coming up with a list, <laughs> and I'm the moderator. Um, so uh, since I teed you up for economic empowerment, what's your number two? About? Well, that's absolutely, that's absolutely true. You're right, because if you look at the wealth gap, you look at this issue of not access to capital, you're exactly right. But in addition to that, I really think that we need to have more diverse leadership in this country, period, across every sphere, the political sphere, uh, the economic sphere, corporate, and everything. Because it's very interesting, we are going through a dynamic demographic shift in this country. Uh, as we sit here today, the majority of babies born in America are babies of color. Uh, but interestingly enough, if you look at the dynamic of leadership in this country, uh, I would say that in many accounts, it's actually becoming whiter and whiter, statistically speaking, that's the truth. And so as we are changing our dynamic in terms of who we are as the citizens of this country, uh, we are also at the same time experiencing an, an increasingly white power, power sphere. And so, you know, for us to be able to really be able to make the changes that need to be made in this country, generally speaking, as well as within specific communities, we need to make sure that we uh, are able to be represented in official spaces of leadership, in public and in the private sphere, uh, so that the needs of our communities can be heard and specifically acted upon. Where would you focus on that? I think. So I think my hesitation in, oh my God, I only get two important things. <laughs> you was, may have 10. Okay. Uh, what we've been talking about a little bit already in the panel is the need for an intersectional lens in thinking about injustice and that it's too, we've passed the point where we can say the biggest issue is gender, the biggest issue is race, the biggest issue is class because we have to start looking at all of them as so intertwined and so grounded in just the way that our communities survive that it, it becomes um, almost as a disservice to focus too much on just one of them at the same time. So I agree that income inequality, you can't move forward if you can't feed yourself and you don't have a job and you can't take care of your children, but also there's race and gender and ability and all, all of these other systems that are at work that are preventing us from moving forward. So, But I worry sometimes when we talk about intersectionality that it almost makes the problem too big, right? It becomes, well, and they do this a lot in education, yeah. right? Education, well, I really can't solve it till we talk about poverty. Well, we really can't solve that till we, you know, and at some point you're like, well, where are we, we going to, to start something. on this problem? So I'm gonna push back on that and say, where, where, where would you, if you had to start to figure out how to move the needle, even given all these, this intersectionality, which I think makes our problem just mm -hmm. bigger, where do we start? What is the thing that we do day one? I, I, I could, oh, Dana, are you still going? Go no, you go. No, you go. No, but I'm you. still articulating. No, but I'm, I'm sorry. Still... Go ahead. I want to, I'm doing, now I'm doing the Amy Schumer I'm sorry thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, Scott. Okay. I was just going to say, and this might make it even bigger than you want to go <laughs> instead of making it smaller, is to look at what we've been growing in this country, which is a culture of disconnection and of lack of really empathizing with each other and that, that we're seeing across all of these different sectors. So how do we shift a conversation around the need for a connection and community building uh, as part of a solution that that, and in some ways that's a, a care, a female uh, um, caregiving as something that we are saying is part of a solution, but we need to see that across all different sectors, that why are we disconnected from each other so much? What I was going to say, I mean, it is hard for me to pick the one thing, but I'm going to raise something that I think is very important to me and, and is a big one thing, which is the issue of girls' and young women's confidence 
and which often doesn't really get discussed. And I think in many ways, the lack of confidence um, and our not paying attention to that problem, maybe because we want to pay attention to more institutional issues, rightly so, um, maybe because it's too intangible for us to pay attention to. But when I think about like, what's the one thing I want to give a girl, it is a sense of personal authority so that she can ask for what she needs and have agency in the world. And for whatever reason, oh, well, thank you. Um, okay, cool. So what I was gonna say about that, so here's something that kind of annoys me. I guess you might tweet this, whatever, it's fine. Uh, but like, there's an intense focus right now on like girls in STEM, girls in STEM, girls in STEM. And I am all about girls in STEM. And yet, in many ways, we're not getting to the root cause of why girls are not succeeding in STEM, which is many of them lack a sense of confidence and personal authority once they find themselves as minorities in um, a science classroom. And so I worry that we're continuing to repeat the pattern of let's make the girls just like the boys. Look, they can do a startup too without recognizing that there are different messages that girls internalize about how much space they can take up and um, with their opinions, with whatever it is. Uh, and we continue to not really address that root problem. Uh, and the longer we do that, I worry and kind of continue doing the STEM scene, we're really continuing to miss the point. And I definitely agree with everything that Rachel said, and actually Rachel, someone else who I interviewed for my book, because that was one of the biggest obstacles to um, there being more women leaders is this internalized glass ceiling that girls feel that they don't um, value their voices and visions. Um, also that, um, that they, it's if you, um, how uh, confident, uh, successful, powerful women are sort of thought of as unlikable and girls who want to please and be liked, this becomes sort of like this internalized thing that keeps them very passive. Um, so I definitely totally agree that we have to focus on building self-esteem and leadership in girls. And then I would say, you know, for me, obviously just related to just coming out of doing this book, the need to have more women in leadership positions, obviously in the political leadership, in the corporate sphere. Um, we were talking earlier about the need for more women in the media because the media shapes our consciousness. But then connected to this other conversation, I think we need to transform how we think about how we use leadership and power. I hope that as women get into those positions that they don't feel like they have to mimic the ways it's traditionally been used and you know find different paradigms of power. So, you know, power to rather than power over. Um, so that's one of my biggest hopes is that that's one of the transformations that we'll see.